Hello, this is Pat, and thanks for connecting with me. This is the first in a six-part series in the concepts and estimation of the ARDL bounce testing approach to co-integration. ARDL stands for Autoregressive Distributed Lag. And in the next set of videos, I'm going to be using eViews 10 to perform the estimation process. Now, in this first part, though, I'm going to offer a quick overview on the concept of autoregressive distributed lag which in general when working with uh, time series variables especially in the context of uh, regression there are three types of lags that we may encounter autoregressive which deals with lags of the dependent variable as in the case where say you want to model this guy today we want to figure out how you know what's up with him so you could be looking back over the past three periods periods could be daily weekly monthly, quarterly, annually, to see whether previous behaviors impact his current mood, so to speak. So this is uh, an autoregressive process, so to speak. Distributed lag is the second one, which looks at lags of the explanatory variable and how they impact the dependent variable. And so here, we could extrinsically, if I may use th that term, be additionally looking at how this other individual here, who may look a little bit like this guy here, how his behavior over the past few periods impacts what this guy does today. Additionally, we could also be looking at how this other guy's current behavior actually may be impacting this guy for better or for worse. I mean, for better it could be that they have a positive relationship, for worse might be that they have a negative relationship, all of which are ascertained in the context of a regression analysis. Now, finally, the third type of lag is moving average, which looks at lags of the error term. So now, specifically though, the ARDL model consists of only uh, lags of the dependent variable y and the explanatory variable x as, um, as I show in this uh, color-coded representation where for example the blue refers to the uh, lags of the dependent variable and the red refers to lags of the explanatory variable in compact form you see it right here so we're looking way back down to P number of lags, whatever that comes out to be, and Q number of lags for X, whatever that comes out to be. And now you're getting a sense as to why it is that we need a lag selection criterion, such as a Kaike, uh, to kind of give us a sense as to how far back we should go to, uh, to exploit the fullness of historical data or information in this context in modeling the current behavior of y. And so as I note here, um, the ARDL is uh, autoregressive because y is explained in part by lag values of itself right here. It is also distributed lag because y is further explained by lag values of x as I represent right here. Current values of x may also be included um, in the model as I uh, uh, as, as, I, as I indicate here, but that's up to you, the researcher. All right, so continuing, ARDL modeling gained renewed interest in recent years, a method for examining co-integrating relationships when dealing with a mix of uh, I0 and I1 variables, which are variables that are uh, stationary at level and those that are stationary only after first differencing. And the credit goes to uh, Pesaran and Shen, as I note here, and also Pesaran, uh, Shen and Smith, uh, 2001. So their significant contribution is the bounds test approach for examining if the mix of uh, this I0 and I1 variables nevertheless have a long run relationship. And so the model that I show here, which you've seen a little bit earlier, is the bounds testing approach for examining if in fact we have co-integration and it's broken uh, into these two components the uh, ARDL, traditional ARDL short run terms but expressed in different form and then the long run terms that you see um, that you see out here and so right here uh, the, t uh, the two components the short run and the long run enable us to make inference on 
um, short run and long run Granger causality, so to speak. And notice that if you substitute the usual error correction term for these long run terms right here, you're back to the traditional error correction model that um, you're probably already familiar with. So with that realization, the ARDL bounds test approach may be viewed as a form of unrestricted error correction model because all of the long-term relations um, that, um, that you see right here are clearly specified and not restricted. Right? And um, so to summarize, the ARDL model includes lag values of, of the dependent variable y, current values of the independent or explanatory variable x, and more importantly, lag values of the explanatory variable, the regressors. Now the model can be specified for a combination of variables with uh, i1 and i0, um, but definitely not i2 or higher. Right? And it can also be specified if you want to, if all variables are of order i1. So you don't have if you don't wish to go the route of Johansson's test of co-integration when you have all I1 variables and then from there proceed to error correction model to e examine long-run dynamics um, you can just simply stick with ARDL and you'll be quite fine now ARDL model may include endogenous and exogenous variables by the way unlike the uh, vector error correction oh, sorry the vector autoregressive model which uh, includes only endogenous variables, as I indicate here. And so, in the bounds test approach, which we're going to sh show uh, shortly, uh, we're going to be testing to see whether these long-run coefficients here, the phi1 and phi2 and others, uh, whether um, they are statistically significant. Because if the F statistic testing them is significant, then we're going to conclude that there is co-integration between um, x and y and then with that we're going to proceed with the uh, vector error correction model representation to help us examine the long run dynamics of the variables. Secondly also um, we can also within that context examine the uh, short run specification these terms right here to infer on short run causality if that exists. In any event if you perform this F test and you fail to reject the null hypothesis that there is no co-integration, um, then in, uh, what that means is uh, you don't have to go ahead and do the bounds test. And uh, the only thing that's going to be left for us to do would be to proceed um, only with the ARDL short run specification to see if we have sh short run causality. And as in all cases, we're definitely going to perform some model diagnostics. For example, check to make sure there's no serial correlation. Check to make sure that the model is dynamically stable. And uh, that'll be it.